Hi, I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety, and in today's video, we're gonna talk all about confined space safety. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The reason that confined space work is so hazardous is you're basically in confinement with whatever hazards happen to be present, like atmospheric hazards, chemical hazards, or even biological hazards, like bugs or rodents. <laughs> anyway, with confined spaces, there's the potential to get trapped with things you don't want to be trapped with including co-workers. Confined spaces are dangerous because you're in confinement with whatever the hazards are. The first step to working in a confined space is the same as any other dangerous work. Identify the hazards by performing a hazard assessment. Although there are endless configurations of what a confined space can look like, for this segment, let's use the example of this tank to illustrate them. Now, since confined spaces don't facilitate air movement, any gases in a confined space are likely to accumulate. So the first types of hazards you need to think about are atmospheric, meaning anything that can be inhaled. Most fatalities in confined spaces happen when the entrant is exposed to a gas and passes out, and then someone goes into the space to save them and they also pass out. And many times, even a third person goes in and also gets overcome. In fact, 60% of people who die in confined spaces are attempting to rescue the entrant. So we need to consider all possible sources of air contamination. This can include a lot of different things like remnants of what was stored in the space, rotten debris, off-gassing, cleaning agents, flammable gases, and many others. Some gases are heavier than air, while others may be lighter. Some gases may be toxic, while others displace oxygen, like carbon dioxide, argon, and nitrogen, making it impossible for people to get the necessary oxygen. After atmospheric hazards, we need to think about things like chemical exposure, or engulfment hazards, which are those that can immerse you in liquids or small grains like literal grains or sugar. Moving equipment is especially hazardous in confined spaces because it's more likely that we'll be caught in it. Electrocution is also a more significant hazard because we're in close quarters with the electrical equipment. We also need to consider the potential for flammable and combustible gases to accumulate and then potentially be sparked by the work. Other hazards can include noise, poor lighting, thermal hazards, and biological hazards. There can be a lot of different sources of hazards and it's important to identify all the hazards because they're more serious when you're stuck in a space with them. If you know what they are, then you can take steps to reduce your risk. <laughs> 